The title of this video implies it's going to be a bit negative, and it is. But first, let's have a look at the positive. Electric cars are going crazy globally right now, doubling in sales last year. They're going to double in sales again this year. And by the way, transitioning to electric vehicles is going to happen way quicker than even I predicted. I said 2030. I'm changing that now to 2028. In addition, here are five compelling reasons for hope in 2022. In 2021, the Philippines ended its polio outbreak. In addition, Niger became the first African country to eradicate river blindness. China was officially declared malaria-free after a 70-year effort to eradicate the disease. Last year, the WHO, the World Health Organization, approved the world's first malaria vaccine. That's a disease that kills one child every five minutes. And assistive technology for people with a disability took a giant leap forward in 2021 with advances in brain-computer interfaces, making it possible for a paralyzed man to write just by thinking. Yes, technology is driving the world forward in so many positive ways. Those are just a few of them that all happened in 2021. Hello, my friends. Welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Great to have you here on the channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back to everyone else. We've made more than a thousand videos over the last eight months. Make sure you check some of those out. Click the notification icon so you get notified of our videos. I'm going to try and focus on a lot of the positive things that are happening in the industry right now. But I think it is important to point out that this idea that plug-in hybrids are somehow good for the environment is a little bit of a myth. It's perpetuated primarily by car manufacturers trying to avoid paying fines in the EU and China, by the way, because, of course, if they say that their cars are clean, make false claims that they're clean, then they can avoid paying these fines and have, or having to pay Tesla in emissions credits. So that's what's been happening. There's been a fair few studies done over the last few months showing that plug-in hybrids are, well, nowhere near as clean as they claim. And I think it's pretty obvious that that's true because generally the way that they're actually owned and operated in the real world is not the way that the testing is done to say that, oh, these cars produce these minuscule amounts of CO2. So really, in the real world, plug-in hybrids are polluting 200 to 400% more than official ratings. A clean technical reported that real world CO2 emissions of plug-in hybrid cars, FEVs as we know them, are on average two to four times higher than official values which for most plug-in hybrids are less than 50 grams per kilometer on paper. On paper is the key point here. Almost 1 million of them will have been sold in the EU in 2021 alone. Don't get me wrong, they're still better than primarily gas-powered vehicles. They're just nowhere near as good as what the manufacturers are claiming. Car makers are pushing their sales because they're unrealistically low official CO2 emissions allow them to easily meet their CO2 targets and avoid paying fines. Yet FEVs do not deliver the expected CO2 savings on the road due to both their design and their lack of incentives to charge them, undermining the car's CO2 regulation and reducing the sales of truly zero emission cars. Now, because people are getting this false perception that these cars are really clean, then they avoid some of them in case they could just choose to buy an electric vehicle instead of choosing the plug-in hybrid. To address this problem, the European Commission is planning to reform the way that FEV, plug-in hybrid, CO2 emissions are calculated. In other words, the European Commission has acknowledged that this issue exists. They call it a loophole, and they're planning to close this loophole. They're going to update utility factors, or UFs, the currently unrealistic assumptions on the share of electric kilometers driven by FEVs, which underestimate the official plug-in hybrid CO2 values. This review is welcome and is urgently needed as the credibility of Europe car climate policy is at risk. The real world data on plug-in hybrid cars use will soon be available from onboard fuel consumption meters, OBFCMs, fitted to all cars sold in the EU from the start of 2021. So we're gonna be able to see what they're really using. Yet, the Commission is not planning to use that data fully until 2030, unfortunately, allowing polluting plug-in hybrids to be sold for potentially another decade. Now, I hope that most people will say, uh, actually, is this really a good idea to buy a vehicle with 
an internal combustion engine in it and an electric powertrain. Combine the two, you're basically dragging around one other thing that you don't need to be. Obviously, in China, where the cost of battery electric vehicles is on par with plug-in hybrids and on par with purely gas vehicles, eight out of 10, or sometimes nine out of 10 people will choose the electric vehicle. So here, the key issue is just affordability. Once the cost of electric cars comes down so that they're on parity with ICE vehicles, that's the initial purchase price, by the way, not the operating cost, not the cost of ownership. The cost of ownership is already cheaper for electric vehicles everywhere. But once the initial purchase cost comes into parity, and once there's enough electric vehicles to buy, that's another key problem right now, then of course, most people are not gonna choose a plug-in hybrid, they're not gonna choose a gas vehicle, they're just gonna choose an electric vehicle because it just makes more sense for them financially over the long term and over the short term. Now, the reason they've been decided to delay until 2030 actually using this information is that the Commission, the European Commission, is concerned over real-world data availability from OBFCMs as collection during periodic technical inspections does not begin until 2023. They're concerned there's not enough data. But the reality is that only 1.5% of records, 14,000, need to be collected by car makers in 2021 from the close to 1 million FEVs expected to be sold this year for the Commission to have more representative data than the data set they plan to use from 2025. Clean Technica says it is highly likely that such a small threshold will be achieved and therefore there is no reason not to base UFs on real world data as soon as possible and no later than 2025. Delaying will not only undermine car CO2 reduction goals, but will lock Europe's car makers into suboptimal technology at the time of the global race to electrification. It does appear to be a delay tactic to say, oh, we've got this, we won't have enough data until 2030 to make a real decision. Alongside implementing real world UFs as soon as possible, the commission also needs to ensure that UFs remain representative of plug-in hybrid car use. The commissions should therefore update UFs on an annual basis in line with the frequency of OBFCM data collection to reward manufacturers which sell efficient plug-in hybrids and encourage their customers to charge. That's the key point, encourage them to charge. A lot of them don't charge them, they just drive them on the petrol engine. And so then of course, the, the car is just, it's just lugging around that electric drivetrain, meaning it's actually burning more fuel and therefore using more CO2. Now, personally, I'm hoping this is gonna be a relevant issue by 2025, once the cost of electric vehicles have come down and once there's so many, there's millions more of them to buy. By that time, I think plug-in hybrids will have lost their appeal and purely electric vehicles will have become dominant everywhere in the EU, in China, in the US, in Australia, in Canada, everywhere, period. That's what I predict will happen. I predict that once we invest billions of dollars, billions of dollars being invested right now into more affordable battery technology, into better lithium ion phosphate batteries. That's the key. I mean, just for starters, just imagine if all we did tomorrow, right? Every battery, every car manufacturer in the world just said, ah, oh, okay, we're not gonna use lithium ternary batteries anymore. We're just gonna use lithium ion phosphate. I mean, obviously those batteries are not available right now, but just imagine if that was possible. It would be in a couple of years, but just imagine it is now. What would happen? Well, the cost of all those cars would, would decrease to the manufacturer by probably 15 to 20% within a minute. One of the key problems with affordability is simply because manufacturers chose to use lithium ternary batteries when they didn't have to. They could have used lithium ion phosphate batteries like most car companies in China are doing now. So if you look at it, 90% of all cars sold outside of China, you don't use LFPs. They use lithium ternary batteries, which is so much more expensive. Tesla obviously has helped to make the perception of LFP batteries a thing in the automotive world outside of China. But really, all that needs to happen is over the next few years, these automotive manufacturers, Legacy Auto, Volkswagen, Ford, I mean, Tesla's already doing it, other manufacturers, just start using lithium ion phosphate batteries in your vehicles and the prices will be up to decline enormously. I mean, why Stellantis can't work this out? I don't know. Toyota as well. Just start using LFP batteries. You can bring the price down to being on par just by doing that. But of course, as we start to invest billions and billions and billions of dollars more into this technology, then the prices will decline. They'll come down. That's what's going to happen. Now, of course, this, many of you are saying, yes, but, 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 you know, we're seeing these increases in lithium costs and there's not enough metals and there's not enough this. Well, even... Even the Chinese, and I'm talking the Chinese government, are saying that's not an issue. They're saying enough mines are being opened. Eventually, or at least within the next couple of years, that will be solved 
by simply by having market forces driving this. More demand means more development. And the key point here is, you're probably saying more mines, oh, that's a problem we're mining the world. Well, the truth is, eventually it'll be a closed circuit where we have enough metals and minerals, materials in that circuit that we don't have to mine them anymore. That's the brilliance about this whole idea. Eventually, all the batteries can be recycled and what will happen is we won't need to do mine anymore at all, period. I made another video about how good that is, about the fact that apparently used batteries are actually just as good, if not better, than current materials. So there's that, that's awesome. Renewable energy use is growing faster than ever before, with another year of record growth in 2021. In fact, renewables are set to account for almost 95% of the increase in global power capacity over the next four years. India's government is banning all single-use plastics from July this year, a huge reform for the world's second most populous country. During COVID-19 lockdowns, the Himalayas were visible from India for the first time in years. Why cleaner air? There are also reports of a resurgence in wildlife, better water quality and improved fish stocks since COVID-19 began. Commitments to net zero emissions reached an all-time high last year. Australia even joined that movement. Major companies made similar commitments with Coca-Cola, General Motors, and Borrell all committing in 2021 to achieving net zero emissions.